Cleveland Delta House is having Sunday meetings. In our Sunday meetings, we both bring up appreciations and grievances about the week. During this week, we had a little bit of a dispute between Gia and I as we discussed the nutritional value of Kalamata olives. What could have ballooned into a massive fight with Gia and I at each other's throats was end up being mediated. One of the things that brings us closer as a house is having dinners every night together. Now we cook together and we clean together as a house, which is very important. So during these meetings, we plan the food that we're gonna have throughout the week, what we need to buy, who's cooking and who's cleaning. And what's cool is we don't have to worry about spending a trillion dollars at a store that's gonna be disappointing. We can cook a, some great food together. We've had some Indian curry, we've had burrito bowls, we've had kebabs, we've had everything under the sun. You bring me to my knees, you make me Barely.
Um, I wake up at 8 a.m. for work. Mm, depends on the day, but 7 to 8. 7.15. 6 a.m. 5.45. 5.45 a.m. 7.50. I wake Cameron up for work. <laughs> <laughs> at like 7.55, our work starts at 8. I get up early to get my coffee because I can't live without it and I'm very codependent. So I get up at like 7. And then I wake Cameron up five minutes before we leave. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> we work at St. Gabriel's Mercy Center. Center. We work at the fabulous Delta Arts Alliance. <laughs> Just the Grand Museum. Museum, Mississippi. I work at Delta Arts Alliance. We work at the Sunflower County Freedom Project in Sunflower, Mississippi. We work at Delta State University at the Delta Center for Culture and Learning. Getting close to the kids we work with and developing relationships with them where they come to us for things that are important to them and just seeing them grow as people. Plus spending time with GS Politics. I like just working in a place where I can just take a break every now and then and go and see one of the most in interesting technologically innovative museums and it's also really interesting work too. I really love that we've managed to like find projects that actually really speak to our own personal interests. These past three weeks, I've been working on this project that's essentially, it's crazy, it's wild. I've interviewed like 50 people now, some ridiculous amount. The fact that my job has transformed into a documentary filmmaking position is kind of epic. My favorite part of my job is working with all the kids. They're awesome. Their ability to learn and like be curious about things is admirable. The amount of energy and work that they put into um, all the tasks that we ask of them, and no matter how difficult it got, they were just putting in like 110%. They're super, super funny. I can never stop laughing around them. <laughs> just getting to know um, kind of the strengths and weaknesses of each of the kids and then watching them develop the whole way through. The workshops, we have two week-long workshops where we're following teachers around the Delta as they're learning about the early civil rights movement, some of the Delta's history, some of the Delta's culture, the evolution of the blues genre. Like Carson said, the workshops, and especially the first one, just because of the first part of the immersive experience, it was kind of just like being thrust into like the music and the culture of Mississippi. I just absolutely loved it. Like the teachers were incredible. We learned so much from the primary sources that we get to talk to. We pretty much plan lesson plans for every week for the kids, uh, Monday through Thursday. And then on Fridays we plan, we work at another summer camp called Fly Zone. We do a lot of arts and crafts with the kids. Um, we try to play a lot of games that incorporate some sort of like learning that has something to do with their general like curriculum as well. Researching or writing, or it could be, sometimes we have meetings with other um, people like at the LA Museum, sometimes we have calls with them or with Delta Arts Alliance. Data analysis for the museum, helping write a lot of the material and helping curate an upcoming temporary exhibit and collaborating with Grammy LA on that. Getting kids information into the spreadsheets, making a snack, assisting artists that are less okay with like handling large groups of children, interviewing people, editing videos, writing our newsletters, leaving voicemails, calling registrants, helping Rory with anything she needs. Me and Bennett teach uh, reading and Ruth teaches rhetoric. We teach creative club after study session and I taught art expression. Um, Bennett teaches robotics and then Ruth taught uh, protecting my piece. In your off time, you're usually planning lessons, writing them down, gathering materials, planning ahead as much as you can. 
we're in charge of doing is making portfolios and blog posts and videos about that workshop to kind of highlight it for the National Endowment for the Humanities for Delta Center to use as promotional materials. Taking B-roll, conducting interviews, taking stills. Only the brave oh. teach. Oh my gosh, it takes a lot of kindness and a lot of patience to get through the kids. They're just so observant. Yeah. How to be professional and um, communicate and then also like speak up when I need help or when I need more to do um, and a little bit of more self-confidence in my own like ability to like write and research. The ins and outs of running a nonprofit and kind of what goes into administering that and kind of the number like the budgetary side of it where you get your money from how you how you build up an organization like that data analysis skills that I really like learned in a classroom but didn't know necessarily how to apply it to professional environments started using Premiere Pro for video editing that's big how to roll with things and like be very proactive about getting the things that I need for my boss because she's a super busy woman. It's loads of editing, interview techniques, how to set up cameras, three-point lighting. I think I learned a lot of patience and figure out that like there was something, there was so much more going on in their daily lives and their backgrounds and that we just had to be accommodating for that. We had to recognize that. I feel like I've learned a lot about how to balance um, kind of being a friend to the kids with being a teacher to the kids. In the really high stress environment of the workshop, I learned how to be like patient and learn how to troubleshoot. Carson and I have like learned a high degree of just like teamwork as far as work goes and cultivating that friendship, just learning to be there for each other and not to be afraid to ask for help and also not to be hesitant to offer help has made the job not only like really intellectually rewarding, but I made a new friend. <laughs> Pretty. Do this job if you're creative. Um, Do this job if you are okay with like less structure than other jobs. It's more of like you have to figure it out yourself. Yeah. Do it if you're like a motivated person. It's definitely the type of job where it's the work that you put in. Do this job feel like music? That's an easy one. Um, yeah. There's music all the time here. A lot of creative people work in this building. Do this job feel like museums? Yeah. Like if you don't mind kind of sitting at a desk for a long time. Do this job if you like art. Being in a gallery space was really exciting for me. If you like posting on social media, editing videos, um, doing that kind of like storytelling content, you want to get better at interviewing people. Do this job if you love kids, um, if you love learning about the civil rights movement, all the beautiful history behind it. Maybe if you've never been to the South, uh, I'd say do Sunflower and just get to learn more about like breaking down those myths and misconceptions. If you really want to like, empower people or inspire people, like if you want to, if you want to um, make that kind of impact, like see how you're affecting people, then this is definitely the job for you. If you like to stay busy, for sure. Yeah. Teaching is something that's interesting to you, even a little bit. If you're someone who's like always appreciated the, te the teachers in your life and everything that they've done for you, do this job if you feel like you need like a creative outlet. If you're looking for a job that is going to challenge you, this job challenges you in all the best ways. So if you really need that environment to grow and learn a lot. If you're looking for something that is going to be super, super challenging, but super rewarding, I think this is the the perfect job for you. If you're on a desert island, there's only one place from Cleveland, Mississippi that you're allowed to eat from. What is that place? Alacardi, Bacardi, and Party! 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 Alacardi, Bacardi, Make it like Cleveland like specific. Like Taco Bell is in a bunch That of is, like, there's like two other restaurants. We're gonna run out. Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, there's, Aaron, there's Aaron, not Aaron. Aaron. Two words. Taco Bell. That's it. You got that middle. Yeah, you want to live a sad life on an island? 
I, I got my Baja Blast. That's all I need. Sounds very islandy to me. Though. Exactly. That's Baja true. Blast Freezy, you're set. Nah. Backdraft if I didn't have to pay. <laughs> That's That's very true. Slap. I'm on the, the back backdraft. Backdraft, yeah. the backdraft yeah. really? That you're set? Backdraft. Wow. That's yeah. slap. I mean, that stuff slaps. Can we talk about yeah. mosquitoes? Well, I don't know about that. Yeah. 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 Can we have a serious yeah. conversation about mosquitoes? If you had to fight a uh, poor sized mosquito. Oh or... my god. A hundred <laughs> mosquitoes? Or a million yeah. mosquito sized horses. A million mosquitoes? Can the horses fly? <laughs> 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 Can the horses fly? 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 Can
going to New Orleans for 4th of July. Yay, America. It was great to like catch up with some other people, hear about their jobs. Half of us stayed in the Belmont house and half of us stayed in the Sunnyet house. Where Nashville was more laid back, NOLA was more of like active self. Um, it was quite, quite hectic compared to like living here in Mississippi. It was so fun seeing all of them and like getting them to show us around the city. New Orleans has really nice streets when you get into like the really consolidated city area that you can just walk, walk up and down and see like shops and food and so we did a lot of just like walking which was nice. We walked around Bourbon Street. Street performers are great in New Orleans. Love a good street performance. Again, amazing food. We got to spend time with Big Nash. We celebrated his birthday while we were there. We got a really nice dinner. We saw fireworks. It was the 4th of July. That's why we went down to NOLA. Um, fireworks are really cool. We also went to the mall. That was my favorite part of the NOLA trip. I think that going there really like made me appreciate Mississippi more and just how like, calm and collected it is. I think that I'm like, I'm more, like, I like always having something to do, but I also really appreciate like, the nice calm environment. We were so ready to get back to Mississippi at the end. Like we needed our downtime and we needed our little home and our, our beds and like cooking for each other. It was so nice to get back here. A few of us went to Montgomery um, to meet up with Trey, who walked. He graduated last year. He is a very cherished Robertson. And just a cherished person in general. Everyone loves him. He also is just like really knowledgeable about Montgomery and he gave us lots of tips on where to eat. He ate so good at Montgomery. He also works for the EJI. Equal Justice Initiative works with people who are incarcerated and are on death row. We went to the National Memorial for Peace and Justice. As you walk through the memorial, like, the level that you're standing goes down, but the pillars are all just, like, like, hanging there. It's, like, in a way very reminiscent of lynching, and you just see, like, the rows and rows and rows and rows of pillars with people's names on them who were lynched. I personally got really emotional there. It's a really good... Memorial. We went to the Legacy Museum and kind of talked about like um, slavery, uh, the civil rights movement, and um, incarceration all kind of geared towards African Americans. I enjoyed both of those um, museums. We stayed in one night and watched movies. Trey made us cookies. Trey also made us breakfast. It was great to hang out with Trey. Our last trip away from Cleveland, Mississippi. Four of us went up to Arkansas just for a day. It was a really good decision. It was a really full Saturday. Drove four hours there. We went to Magic Springs, which is like an amusement park slash water park. Since day one, I had been craving to ride a roller coaster. And we finally got to do it. And I think everyone had a great time. And it was a nice like getaway. Like it was a last, a last hurrah you know, for all of us to be together. Because the next weekend, which is now, is um, when we're leaving. So, it was a nice last trip with everyone. So, what's something you would want to tell yourself before you came down here? You don't want to wait till the end of the summer to realize, well, damn, I could have done more. Like, there were definitely a week or two where we were like, we definitely could have done more. Yeah. Especially like, so there's this one girl right now who like, she's a great writer, but like, she mm. has a gift. Oh yeah, and, you're like, that. we did not you're spend enough time it. developing that, and I'm just worried that yeah. she's gonna think it's like average or something. They assume that you know it all already. Like they assume like you, oh, you get yeah. treated like an actual employee. There's not like any sort of kid gloves on. I would want to like speak to more people in the community. Me and Jay got a flat tire once. Mm -hmm. Literally like five people pulled over on the side of the road to help 
bus. Some of the funnest moments this summer have been like in the kitchen. Most fun. I've come down here with some plans for weekend trips. Um, Cause those first three weekends we were really just all hanging out in the house, but it was really fun. Yeah. But then those next three weekends when we did Memphis, Nashville, and then New Orleans, yeah. just looking back, if we had had that going the first three weeks, it would have had they an even crazier play. summer. Everything here is slow. 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 Yeah. So Get used to it. Slow. It brings you out of your normal headspace yeah. and lets you kind of see things from a different perspective, which is often advantageous to you seeing what's wrong or what needs to change in your life. How yeah, you get friendly with everyone in your class. Like, I didn't know any of these people until I really got here. Buy communal food, make family dinners. Yes. It's the key to success. Just have a system. Have a system that you believe in at the beginning. You know, but don't, don't start a system that you think is gonna fail. When you're at school, it's like UNC and Duke. It just feels like it's like a rat race. You're gonna learn things from this that they can't get from the internships. Actually genuinely explore. Community summer is a great time to like reflect on your first year at college. Doing that effectively yeah. means like balancing that between like having fun and like just being, you know, you. <laughs> by one of your students, you're gonna question it and ask yourself many times when you look in the mirror why. Pre-summer Tamira was excited to teach, but I don't know if she understood exactly the impact she would have and like how much she would like be so emotionally connected to these kids. Like I don't think she had any idea that she was gonna be that connected to them. These two are the loves of my life. I can't like describe in words how much it means for me to like work with them and be around them and learn from them okay. and like just experience life with them. They're great characters to watch and like see grow, which I have seen this summer. Sincerely, Tamir Daly for the future. <laughs> Dear Ruth, and there's going to be some very difficult days, uh, but they're still really rewarding overall. Having that community, having that feeling of like a true family uh, helped me a lot. You're gonna get attached to these kids. You start to recognize how fortunate you are in your, like your child possibly, and you know, the things that they have to deal with in comparison to yours. I wasn't expecting to grow as much as an individual as I have. Dear Bennett of the past, you, you're pretty worried about the job. Um, you're pretty worried about community summer as a whole. But don't worry, the job that's, that you're gonna have like takes you so far out of out of your own head. You're, you're not a snapper right now, but you're gonna snap. <laughs> Period! Buy a Bluetooth speaker. Those are powerful. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so bring true. things other than Converse and your Air Force Ones because <laughs> you're gonna have to run. Um, mile, Monday, Monday, mile. The the fun comes from What's the fun you? comes with who who you're with, and not what you're doing. All yeah, this. yeah, not what you're doing. Oh, yeah. uh, I didn't say that I love you, <laughs> Ruth and oh. Tamira. I love y'all. An hour round trip commute every day. Ooh! It's fun. I'd be sad if we didn't have it. Just pick Mississippi. Period. Pick First year, pick Mississippi. That's the place to be. If you're ever in Cleveland, Mississippi, good, good luck, luck, Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I call you, Lily. Oh, hey, Carson. Dear pre community summer, Lily, drive out to watch the sunset frequently, like at least once a week. Maybe spend less time alone. Like, some of your favorite moments exploring Cleveland, walking around downtown or going to the farmer's market. If you did that with people, it would be even cooler. It's fun, it's stressful, you will break down, you will not sleep, but it'll be fun to ask more questions. You can't just expect to passively learn it, you kind of have to be curious. Pick my head up from the camera or from the laptop because there were some really powerful experiences that I wish I were more like immersed in in the moment. Focus less on doing and more on being and experiencing. Waste less time on your phone. Explore with your friends. Explore by yourself. I, I would tell myself to let the summer be the summer 
and don't necessarily think of it too much in the context of things that happen and things that will be, but just enjoy the time that you're spending here. Um, when I was young, there was just this song I was obsessed with Let's see by I... Benny and the and the Jet. Jets. Let's see if I can remember how... <coughs> <coughs> Fanny Lou Hamer. <laughs> Fanny Lou Hamer. Yeah, yeah, I think that was it. We have eight weeks here. So just milk every second of it. Like, comment, subscribe down below. Okay, now what? How do we finish this thing? We're out of skits. We could do another montage. Another montage would be unacceptable. It's slowing down, you kind of come into a town that's a lot smaller, um, and to a house that was, you know, more of a sort of like community unto its own as opposed to a lot of the other places like New Orleans, which are just like bustle, bustle. Um, I enjoyed that, like, I was able to slow down and I was able to kind of take a breather and not feel rushed to do things like 100% of the time. Um, living in Cleveland definitely, you know, it affords you a lot of time to do things that you wouldn't think you would be able to, things that you don't have time to do in other places, things like read <laughs> and uh, watch TV and just kind of be. Um, just kind of be there, like you're present in a way that I don't think you see in a lot of other places. When I heard Cleveland, Mississippi, I read the population 12,000, I just didn't have like a scale. Um, and I was like, oh, there are gonna be two buildings in this town of us. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised. It's not huge by any standards, but there's more to it than you expect. It's not like there's 100 things to do and you want to try all of it. And that forces you to be creative and to think for the right and to think about how you make your own fun without something being manufactured for you. And so it kind of creates this more of authentic kind of different type of freedom. And it's a different type of um, experience that I think is unique to Cleveland. I think we had a good group of people in which everyone was eager to like jump in a car and just go somewhere. Being around people who were like just so willing to try new things, um, go to new places, like get up early and go see the sunrise or like go see the sunset and things like that that are like wholesome things that like just take people who like are willing to like be spontaneous and be like, you know what, like, let's do this. The fact that I got to learn how to cook new things and go to all these places that I probably would never have been to unless I was like here in Mississippi with these people. You 
feel like if I could put together like a full year from like my favorite months from like all my years, it's definitely two of those. <laughs> But like, you gotta let them really build people in your house, man. So you just get really, really close. And it's like never gonna happen again. Like it's not even the same as college. Like you're in close quarters with your college, like friends or whatever, you live on the same campus. But like here, you're in the same house. I would say my favorite part of community summer is forging beautiful friendships. It's like being in the house, whether it's like everyone watching a movie or just like family dinners, like community summer is such like a time for growth and like relationships with people. And like, I feel so much closer to the people now. Even people like I wasn't close to before, like, it's just, I wish I could do it again. I really wish like, there was like another community fund that we had all together. So And it's also really interesting work too, but mostly the breaks. Um. <laughs> I was about to be like, watch out, Lily. And then she just crashed. I was not paying attention. Okay, if I could write a letter to myself, I would warn myself that I would find the love of my life in a small park in the town of Clarksdale. And <laughs> on, on a magical lawn with bubbles floating around and music playing, I would see her in her leopard leotard, and she would waltz up to us singing uh, Facebook beef, 
Her name's Lady Trucker, and she's gonna sell you a $10 CD that's gonna create five of the most legendary bops that have ever surfaced on this earth, so. There are seven the tracks on that album. I would want to remind myself that love is possible and, and I can find it here in Mississippi. The documentary will have no cuts.